Okay, welcome back to part two of our little compositing tutorial here. This is layout, and what I want to do is go to load, load object, and we're going to choose our candy box. So there you have it. And uh, so that's pretty much it. We're going to get going. No, <laughs> just kidding. All right, enough joking around. We're going to go to Control F5, which brings up the effects tab. We're going to go to compositing and background image, and we're going to load in an image. Uh, I just did a random Google search and found this candy table here. Let me bring it up in the image editor. Uh, it's probably out of view here. So nothing special. I mean, I didn't spend a lot of time looking for an image. But what I want to do is just place our candy boxes uh, on the table right here and have, you know, like a, a soft shadow like some of these do have and maybe a little bit of reflection. And we're going to, uh, to achieve the little reflections in the shadows, we're going to talk about front projection mapping. So yeah, that's the image. If we go into the camera view now, you can see that our background image is showing up, but it looks kind of squashed. So what I want to do is go into the image editor and look at our size of the image, the dimensions. And then I want to hit Shift C, which selects the camera down here, the current item, hit P for properties, and under the width, I want to put in 2623. And under the height, I want to put 1557. And X out of that. Actually, let's uh, up our minimum samples to, say, about 3 for now. But the edges aren't going to be jagged now. So let's X out of that. And X out of that. The next thing to do is select the camera. And with the right mouse button, click and drag up. And we want to match our ground plane to the table. So let's uh, hit Y for rotate. and rotate it back, and then T for move and move it down again. Uh, that looks about right. Let's hit the 4 key to go into the perspective view. Zoom out here. Then I'm going to select the candy box and move it up on the Y. Hit the 6 key to go into the camera. And I'm just going to hit Shift H and scale this down a little. Uh, let's see. Rotate it slightly. And let me go to Setup. I'm sorry, modify coordinate system, choose local to the object so I can mess around with the translation handles better. And maybe it should be a little bit smaller. I've never had these candies before, so I have no idea how big the box is. I'm just taking a random guess here. All right, so that seems fine. We can adjust it a little later if we need to. And now uh, I want to clone it. Let's put another one in there. So let's hit Control C, clone current item, number of times, one, hit OK. And just keep rotating this, moving it around. Let's rotate it 90 degrees so this one's laying flat. And just keep messing with it. I mean, you can obviously put these in any place you want to, and you can find another image and just, you know, make it more your own. Uh, I even want to kind of rotate this back, almost like it's resting on top of the other one. Okay. So you can see down here that auto key was turned on. If I scrub through my timeline, nothing happens. But, but if auto key was turned off, and I move this over here without making a keyframe, and I move my uh, timeline, then it shifts back to where it was. If you want to move it over here, you have to make a keyframe if auto keys off. And you do that by create key and then hit OK. I'm not going to do it, but then it'll stay there once you move it. So for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to keep auto key on. So let's just uh, go into VPR, which is the viewport render, all in OpenGL. You can see that. They look like they're in the scene, but the lighting's not correct, and uh, there's no like really soft shadow. Uh, I also want to turn on OpenGL overlay so I can shift this back a little bit. Like that. And then turn off OpenGL overlay. Oh, man. My OCD is kicking in. Move it over a little bit more. Okay. 
Yeah, so now what we want to do is add in a little ground plane. And that is going to be what our shadows and our reflections are going to get casted onto. So in layout, we have some modeling tools. So under geometry, I'm going to create a ground plane. And the default settings are fine. Let's hit the 4 key. And let's go back to texture shaded solid. I'm just going to lift this up and then hit the 6 key to go into the camera view. Shift H, size this ground plane down. And let's hit 4. And I'm going to hit this little target button here which will uh, center me on the selected object. And I just want to move this around. Hit the one key, go into all the different views and make sure that everything is good. Even take this candy box and move it down. Okay, I can even scale that down slightly. H for stretch squash it a little bit, and 6 to go back into our camera view. So now, if you go into VPR, and this is exactly what our render is going to look like. I can even show you right now by going to render and hitting render frame. You can see, yeah, scale it down here, that our viewport render looks exactly how the real render does. So when you're making changes, there's no need to do test frames. You can just turn on VPR and make all your changes in there. Let's X out of that. And now what I want to do is go into the surface editor for the ground plane. Under the texture editor, we're going to go to uh, projection and choose front. For image, we're going to choose the candy table. So what that's doing is basically mapping the image onto that ground plane and giving the illusion of detail. And it's actually a, a great way to composite in your 3D software packages. So let's uncheck pixel blending and we're going to use that texture. But you can see that the lighting still doesn't match and you can obviously see the harsh edge of the ground plane. What I want to do though is just select all of our objects by clicking on this little thing there. And then start on OpenGL overlay. And I just want to move them over. Whoops. Undo that. First, let's change our coordinate system back to world. And shift it over a little bit, like that. OK. All right, so now we got to match the lighting a little bit better here. Let's go to lights and hit the 5 key so we can see through our light. I'm just going to switch back, switch back to texture shaded solid. And right there they are. So for this image, uh, I'm going to hit D to go to display options. And for viewport, change to double vertical. On this side, I'm going to look at the VPR and hit the 6 key to look at it through the camera. Then in this side, I'm going to look through the light. So uh, this is at a house. Obviously, uh, the lighting is probably overhead from a ceiling fan. Uh, the, shadow, the shadows are very dull and uh, you know, they're not casted off to the left or right or front or back. So I'm just going to keep rotating this light into place. You know, a little bit overhead there. But I only want this one to affect the ground plane. So what I want to do is go to the projection, op or um, I'm sorry, the properties of the light and go to objects. And I'm going to exclude the candy box, both the candy boxes, the, the two is the clone. Okay, and we can adjust that light as needed. But in the properties of that, I'm also going to call this uh, ground plane light. And let's just turn off ambient intensity. Ambient intensity is a, a global setting, so it'll also stay at zero for our other lights. Let's go to items, and we're going to add another light. I'm going to add a area so that we have some soft shadows. And this is going to be overhead. Hit OK. And 5 to look through the light. And I'm just moving the camera around, just hitting the T key, and uh, which is move, and then Y for rotate. And let's put this about let's say about right there. So we have some nice soft shadows. Okay, but I don't want this light to affect the ground plane. 
set P for properties and exclude the ground plane. And obviously it needs to be a little brighter. So let's go into the properties and change this to 100 and maybe even 120. And in this case for the light color, I'm going to uh, make it Kelvin, or sorry, the so I can choose from this gradient. You know, just add some warmth to it. Maybe not that much warmth, just a little bit. Okay. And now that our lights are, are mainly set up, I want to go back into the viewport render. So hit the D key and go to single. And I just want to, you know, keep playing with the settings. As you can see, the light uh, above head for the ground plane really did work. And if we go into the surface editor, under I'm sorry, under the new ground plane, we can add a bit of reflection to this, uh, just so that you guys can see it at 50%. And you know, you see the the slight reflections happening in there. You know, just uh, yeah, about 50%. All right, the shadows, um, you know, it's kind of an illusion looking at these because it looks like there's a slight shadow, but actually there isn't because we excluded those two lights from even affecting the ground plane. So our shadows aren't even showing up. So if we go to the overhead light number one and uh, hit P for properties, you can see that the second we uncheck new ground plane object, the shadow shows up right there. I'm just going to go ahead and change this back to an area light. But now what we need to do is go into the light that's affecting the ground plane, hit P for properties, and just lower the intensity of that. And I'm going to switch back to the main viewport here. And just keep messing with the intensity. See uh, the edges get either brighter or darker. And just find a happy medium. And now I want to go back to double vertical. And let's go to our overhead light, T for move, and just move it around. Shift H, I'm actually going to scale this up so it softens our shadow. You can see there. And let's go into our second light here. Not in this viewport though, in this one. Uh, let's see. There we go. And just move this around. D key, jump back to single. All right, so you can see there, it's looking a lot more composite. I mean, the, the shadow's nice in there, but I actually think the shadow is a bit too much. So I'm gonna go into, let's see, uh, the ground plane light, go to properties, and I wanna increase that intensity. And then I wanna go into the overhead light, decrease that, so you see it's just softening our shadows and making them less obvious. Let's go to overhead light 2, P for properties, just up the intensity to 150, see how that looks. The whites are kind of blown out, you can see on the cake here, they're looking a bit overexposed, but not up at the top of the image. Uh, maybe bring it down to 120. Alright, so I, I actually think that's about as close as we're going to get with just a color map. And I say that because in order to really, really match your uh, 3D models to the lighting of your 2D image or your actual footage, you need other maps. You need a diffuse map, you need a spec map, you need an occlusion, occlusion map. All those maps are key to really making your 3D model fit into the image. And that's getting into more advanced topics but we will be coming out with larger tutorials that are going to go through all those steps and you're going to be able to follow along seamlessly. Um, this is just a mini tutorial to get you guys started so you can mess around and have fun with it. Um, you know, choose different images, find different models that you can uh, add UVs to and you know, really just uh, keep practicing and, and get more experienced with it because uh, being able to just do simple scenes like this is actually a lot of fun. So I, I hope you did learn a lot from this. Um, I had fun doing it, and I'll see you guys in the next one.